Well, we're here to answer your game, gaming and game night questions. Tonight, specifically, we're going to be answer, answering questions live from our chat room here on Twitch. While these can include your usual game or game night questions, we do want this to be an AMA or an AUA, so feel free to ask us anything you want. All right, I know the chat room is going to have lots of questions for us, but they're going to need some time to type those out. So what I'm going to do is give the lobbyists a chance to put something into the chat for us to get going on. So we're going to answer a question from our digital mailbag first. Well, tabletop patron Jeff Seuss writes, when we get back to gaming at the FLGS, particularly mm -hmm. for public gaming events, what's the one thing, not including the game itself or food, that okay. you're most looking forward to? Gaming with other people is too obvious. So <laughs> what about okay. gaming with, with other people is what he's looking for. All right, try to like like really specifying that there. Right? Well, I, I admit he, he knew what the, the common answers are going to be, right? What are you looking forward to? Well, playing with other people or playing games with other people or, or the awesome food at <laughs> you know, yeah. Or the unfortunately, food our, our food source is gone. I, I, there isn't a local game store with good food anymore. There isn't even a local game store with food except for like snacks, you know, chocolate bars and stuff. So that that'll be an adjustment. I can't look forward to the food anymore. Well, and we also dream. aren't even sure if there's playing at the FLGS of yes. preference. <laughs> some some have it, some don't. But the ones yeah. I know that do have playing currently do not have food, even though one was a restaurant. But anyway, um, the big thing I am looking forward to is the the advocacy, the sharing the hobby, and not just gaming with people, but letting people experience games, new games. Because the big thing I want to do is I want to show off the new games. There are so many. We should do a podcast episode once this is all done. The best games we discovered during the pandemic. Because there are so many games that were new to us. Like we just talked about Great Western Trail the Inbox. And that one was fantastic. And yes, new to us. I know we're not new botanists. We've talked about that enough times. I want to show off Space Base. I want to try Space Base with seven people. I want to play um, with the party games. Like we got the mind we got just before. What was the other one? There, there's one we played. I'm trying to blank. Dude, I want to play Dude with a bunch of people at the local game store at least once before I get rid of the copy and never have to do it again. Um, I, I swear there's another big party. Telestrations Upside Dawn. I've only gotten to play it with the kids. Yeah, like That is definitely a big group game. Where, where's my big group to play Telestrations? So it, it's showing off the new hotness, showing off something I am excited about, something I want to, like, here, check out this awesome thing and having someone be like, yes, that is awesome. That's the aspect of gaming with people I miss combined with the new person, the, the, the person who moved to Windsor in the last two years or the gamer who was always too shy to go out, but like they spent a year and a half in the basement. They want to get out and they want to meet some people or the people who discovered board games and board game arena while this was going on, who we've been telling, Hey, we used to run events, come back out when we can do that big, Hey, things are opening up, come and play and having those people discover new games and meet other local gamers and then seeing them go on to play, right? Like when I'm seeing the pictures of them playing at home, a game I taught them, that is the best part of this entire thing. So that is what I look forward to the most. So in a way it's the games, but it's, it's just, it's the showing off the games. It's the advocacy. And see, for me, it's, I, you know, he doesn't want us to say gaming with other people, and that's fine. Uh, because honestly, I do game with other people. I game with them digitally. I mm -hmm. game online. I game, you know, with uh, through Zoom. I and I've even started occasionally <laughs> when uh, when time allows to get down and game with Cat and Tori and Mo and Dee and uh, and you know get a little bit of pers in person gaming. But mm -hmm. there's just something about um, the face to face interactions in a game that aren't reproducible on zoom or on, right. on BGA. There's that, you know, when you sit down in front of someone, especially someone you have, you don't play with all that often and, and you, you feel their emotions across the table and you feel them, their excitement or disappointment or whatever it is. There's that emotional mm -hmm. environment that, that comes with playing with other people and it only grows bigger and bigger. The, the bigger yeah. your groups are. Uh, and that's, you know, as much as I don't love people and I, you know, I'm, I'm with D, keep me away from the crowds. But, you know, there is still a certain level of emotional involvement um, and, and, you know, group emotional group thinks, for lack yeah. of a better term, that happens when you're out playing at events that you just cannot duplicate mm -hmm. digitally. It doesn't it just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. And actually, uh, to, to go along with that, I actually miss the uh, 
I'm failing for the term here too, but the, the gathering of like-minded people, the, the feeling you're with your people, you're with a bunch of others who are into the same thing you have, the feeling of camaraderie, family, I guess it could be, the, the, that group think that way. And I got to admit, personally, I'm, I like crowds. I'm a person who feeds off crowds. So I miss the having lots of other people around doing things while I'm doing something because that just feeds me, that fuels me. I, I am definitely a social vampire in that way that I actually, I'd, like, I'd love to go to the mall when it was packed, just being around it. And I used to love walking down to the, like, the Freedom Festival or watching the fireworks down by the river just to be around all the people and people watch. So there is that aspect of it too, which it doesn't matter even who those people are in that case. That's just being in crowds and feeding off the energy of crowds is definitely something that's, that's I know that Sean and D don't agree with, but I definitely get out of it. I, mean, I may not actually be extroverted, but um, I definitely do uh, feed off crowds. There you go. All right. Well, uh, Tech has a selfish question. Uh, which game will you bring with you that we will play together the next time we can get together? That's from right. Tech2674 in our chat room. Number one's got to be Go Cuckoo because we keep making fun of them for never playing Go Cuckoo. And that's not even a COVID thing. It just never happens. So we got to play Go Cuckoo with Tech. And next, I think, has to be Space Base. Like maybe we'll play through Shy Pluto with him and then he can discover it on his own and I'll get to have the joy of seeing some of that stuff unlocked, not in a two-player game because that, that did make things drag out a bit. And I would love to do the thing. Um, that's all I'm going to say. The thing at the end. I would love to replay the thing at the end one more time. I think that that would that was an enjoyable experience. That's the one thing I might roll back and actually try again at some point with that. So th those are the main ones I can think of. You got anything you want to play with Tech? Uh, I I think definitely go cuckoo. I, I yeah. the shot the fact that he hasn't played it yet is just astounding. Um, I mean, because we you've had go cuckoo for I, I got two? it in 2019. Was it 2019? Well, there wasn't a lot of lone room there before everything shut down. I don't know because I mean I, got I it remember at Origins 2019. Okay, because I because I remember playing it at least in twice November. in Windsor. Well, oh, you that... you played it at easy mode one time and then at extra life. Yeah. Which was all 2019, right? Yeah, that was no, all I guess. leading up to November. Yeah. That hasn't um, been that long. Oh, and D's saying Shadow Veil. What is Shadow Veil? Isn't Shadow uh, the the new Valeria? Isn't that the new Valeria one? Shadow Shadow Kingdom. I don't Shadow know Kingdoms what Shadow of Veil she's talking no, no. about. Shadow Kingdoms or, of Valeria is the one I'm thinking. Shadow of. Kingdoms of Valeria, maybe. I, don't I know. think there is something called Shadow Veil that sounds familiar, but it's not one I'll be able to bring up. I think Shadow Veil is a podcast. I'm not, no, I'm not sure. I think there is a uh, game called Shadow Veil. Shadow yeah, Kingdoms Shadow of Valeria. Valeria. Yeah, that's it. She, she and I were on the same on the same oh failure page mean. there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Shadow uh, Kingdoms of Valeria is good. I, I am looking forward to trying the other one. Sure, Tech can play that. I, 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 I don't remember him being excited about that one when we were talking about it. Space Space is the big one. Big one. What we have to do when we can meet in person is give Tech a mug. I think is what we should do <laughs> if we can meet in person. We'll find a mug and we'll we'll set you a reasonable price. All right. Uh here we go. Uh here we ah, uh, here we go. Math Guy Dave asks, do you have miniatures for old RPG campaigns saved away somewhere? Like a favorite character that lives on a shelf these days. Yes. Yes. Um I don't play a lot, so I don't have a lot of characters. So most of the characters I have are from DD fourth edition playing Living Forgotten Realms, because I've talked before about how I became a Herald-level DM and ran hundreds of games locally. Well, before that, we got back into D&D &D by joining a local table at Hugen and Munin, and Deanna and I played. That's where we met um, some, some awesome people. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. Chris, I know. What, what was the other big guy that was always with Chris? I can't even remember the DM's name. I feel terrible. Dave and his wife. Oh, man. I guess it's been too long. Um, but anyway, when I started playing that, I started collecting D and D miniatures. And at the time there was still the D and D miniatures game. Like it was, you, you didn't just buy minis, you bought the, the sleed mixed packs and there was a game to be played. And what I would do is every new character, I'd find myself a new miniature. Now, some of those came from my old school miniatures. And my first ever character was Ragnar Pack Slayer, which was a paladin of Tempest in Living Forgotten Realms. And it was a Warhammer a Middenheimer, so City of the White Wolf with a big wolf pelt 
and a huge hammer. And my background was that I killed the wolf. And that was, you know, a coming of age thing. And she had to go into the woods and earn your pelt by surviving. And I had killed the alpha. So I still had, I painted a miniature for that. And actually it's one of my best painted paint jobs ever. Um, then I started going from that to expanding to every time I made a new character, I picked out a miniature and painted it. And then I also bought a set of matching dice. So then they were color coded together. And that to me is still a thing. Like if I was going to play D and D next week, and the campaign was going to go on, I would go find a miniature and I would actually pick up the paints, assuming some of those back there aren't dried out and at least do it. So I have every fourth ed character I played through that campaign. Um, the dice, some of those have gone missing, but I did own at least a D20. Uh, it started with a D20. I usually bought a D20 and a primary damage die. So with Ragnar, he had a D8 Warhammer, but then eventually I got a feat that did D12. So I actually bought a matching color D12, but like I didn't buy a whole set. I just bought the D20 for your attack rolls and everything else in D&D. And then I bought a couple damage dice. When I played a cleric though, I went and spent a fortune because I bought blessed dice for all the players, right? So I have D4 dice because blessed at, this, at that time, blessed gave everyone a D4 die. So I went and bought color-coded D4 dice. And then I got whatever the next one, protection from evil gave you something. So I got something for that. Um, I also painted up some of these characters for her. I painted up her, her. this goes back to D&D 3.5, her half-orc paladin. I painted that one up both, um, stand, did we ever do standard scale or just enlarged? You must have had a standard scale one. I'm, I'm trying to remember. I know, I remember painting up that she used enlarged a lot. That was, that was their combat tactic was a wizard would cast enlarged and she would fight with two two-handed swords, one in each hand. And I, I definitely painted up her big one. And I can't, we must've painted this, the standard scale one too. Or eventually we enlarged permanence her maybe. I can't even remember now. So yeah, I've painted up some of these. Uh, these Garrett the Cleric is one of my best paint jobs. That was the first time I tried object source lighting on the holy symbol and it actually turned out really good. So yeah, definitely. Uh, to be honest, though, some of them, I couldn't even tell you the characters' names. Like, I remember <laughs> Ragnar because I played him the longest. I actually got him up to, like, level 18 or something ridiculous like that. But, like, I also had a thief one or an elf one. I have no idea what that elf was called. All I remember is I, I tried to always talk in rhymes. Never set that limit for yourself. That was way <laughs> too dang difficult. And I spent most of the game barely paying attention to the DM trying to think of rhymes so that I could say something. So that was a bad idea. Um, I had a halfling that, that killed the main boss with a spoon, which I loved. I've got a miniature for him. I painted up. He's uh, he's trying to be tall, so he's on a special base that I made that's tall to make him as high as the other miniatures. So yeah, definitely, definitely have miniatures of my previous characters. And Deanna's got miniatures going back to the AD and D days. I think she's got a miniature for Teal right over here. Yeah, and, these and then you didn't play with minis. So. No, I never. We we did with two point oh. We didn't play. We didn't really play with minis. Or two point five even. We didn't really use minis. Uh, and I kind of bowed out uh, beyond that. And I was never a big fan of it. Now, possibly because I never played fourth ed. That I I I will admit I never played fourth ed at all. Yeah. And I never got into the the miniature D and D the way you guys did. Uh, which may change my opinion. May have changed my opinion. But yeah, for me, I've always preferred the theater of the mind and that's why I, I love playing on discord and stuff and then you know we don't even we rarely even use maps so but as far as uh people have called these rpg artifacts before we actually had a, talk, a whole we show did. where we talked yes. about rpg artifacts and talked about this uh sean what sean keeps his character sheets yep he's still got all his old characters and not even just character sheets i have like but, workbooks that of you know the calculations i did for a casino that one of my characters was running and, and and you know the 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 monthly income and how that all came together and things like that um i i keep all that little that that sort of stuff i have a big thick binder of of that sort of stuff yeah see i have some but again i didn't play yeah like you back were running then all. i didn't play at all like like now i play now and then at least i play at cons um I'll admit I don't keep all my stuff. Like, like I mostly when I play nowadays, it's at cons. Well, nowadays being two years ago at this point, well, not a lot of cons you don't get to keep them, right? It's they're well, they're reading they the back, for the next right? con, and that is disappointing. Yeah, I I always ask if I can keep them, <laughs> and sometimes they say no. And to be honest, if you are running a game at a con, you should ask for them back because you will get more feedback on what people did with that sheet than you will ever get from them telling you stuff. Go look at the sheet and go, what the heck? All three people noted stuff in this column. Obviously, I need a spot for that. Or look, people obviously thought this wasn't clear because they made notes and they asked me questions. Like, it's amazing what you can learn from a character sheet. But I kind of hate the idea because I was someone who always wanted to bring mine home. 
Like, I want to get home from Origins and take a picture of all the characters I play. And it's always a mixed bag. Sometimes yeah, yeah. You need to start. We need to start doing uh, just digital galleries. So we just take a shot of our uh, and take a picture. Yeah, of it. I, I want the physical artifact. I know, I know. That, I, 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 I'm it's, there it's with you. School, I get it. I get I it. I want the physical artifact. All right. Uh, next. All right. Question. I'm going to pause just so you all rock. There are so many questions flying <laughs> by. We did call it a flood of questions tonight. Yep. And I know normally we try to limit it to like five, so it's good for SEO. But I don't care. Let's just keep them rolling in. But if you could, Sean, just make sure you do copy them into the notes, so that when I'm trying to do the podcast show notes, I have something to work off. I, of. I, 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 everything I've asked so far it has Perfect. come out of the notes. Awesome. Um, so, uh, so next up, we have another question from Tech. Uh, now that you've gotten a few more games off your pile of shame and obligation, what is the oldest one there now? All right. It is a game called Shadow Lord. It was published in 1984. It is the game I have owned the longest and not played. It is the oldest game on my pile of shame since 1985. <laughs> and going on and on. It is a Parker Brothers game that... Uh, they advertised very similar to Hero Quest, so I wanted it for Christmas. I got it for Christmas, and it disappointed by being one of the heaviest games Parker Brothers ever published, which has forums and forums going, why is this game so confusing? And they just published, like when you got it, there was a telephone number to call that said, this is our most difficult game we published. Here's the phone number for the designer, and here's the phone number for Parker Brothers. So if you have any questions while playing, just call is included with the game. So yes, it is still down there. And at some point, I, I was thinking about this recently when Sean was down. I'm like, and I saw it on the shelf again. And I was like, there, that is the oldest thing on the pile of shame. We need to play this at some because how complicated could it be compared to like an 18xx or a Gloomhaven, right? Like, like there's no way it's that complicated. It's just complicated for a Parker Brothers game, right? Which is, is, you know, that there's only so complex you can get with that. Uh, well, I could be totally wrong, and maybe it'll blow us away. It's, it's card driven, and the cards are just numbered. There's plastic pieces that you move around the board, and you put little ships in them, and there's negotiations involved. So yes, could, that that is my oldest game on the pile of shame so right could, now. It could actually get up to Mo uh, Masters of the Universe bad. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know, maybe. I do remember reading the rules and then not playing it. And I can't remember if there was like a really good reason for that. That may, that may have to be a patron stream. <laughs> oh, it should be. We did it with um, cats. That's true. Yeah. We did stream cats. All right. I am going to look it up. See like modern games, like stuff. Uh, otherwise we have, I'm drawing a blank. Well, Conan's getting is, is up yeah, there. But Conan's it's not your up oldest. There. Conan's up there. Um, I mean, um, ogre doesn't count. We don't. We don't count that as obligation. Well, or, or... well none of this. I, I'm, these aren't obligation. Ogres, maybe one. I, I, that was a gift. I wouldn't have yeah. bought that myself. I should play it. Um, none of these are by date. So no, Adventure is newer. Uh, Vikings, I played. Artist is newer. Brew Crafters, the traveling card game, from 2014 is up there. No, Burning Suns, 2013 um no i got that later like it's an older game but i got that later concordia salsa is older than conan which is why okay. i unboxed it i think concordia salsa is my oldest i think like that's why i grabbed it to unbox but i didn't actually confirm it no duel in the dark duel in the dark i got um at one point i don't even know how many years ago now it's a while a while ago like i think hugan immune was still open Two warehouse stores opened at opposite ends of the city, one at the end of Wyandotte, one on Tecumseh and Howard in that plaza that's there. That's this it it was like a fruit market. And then and now it's <laughs> um I like exercise, not exercise equipment, but like what's the word? Like wellness stuff. Like you, you go there to get wheelchairs and stuff. But for a while it was just this, it was a grocery store, and then it was just this empty building. These two warehouses opened up, and all of a sudden they had board games and they were um five bucks each or something like that or like four for four for I, I, it was a deal whatever it was if you bought six it was cheaper however it worked out and i picked up i don't know like 32 games or something ridiculous like that most of which weren't so great but some were really good like stefan felt speaker stat was in there 
which is a great game. And um, some of the, the Zavendar games, which I actually enjoyed for a long time. I've, I've now gotten rid of them because I played them enough times. And, and what's funny is these games have been passed around at every white elephant we've had for Windsor Gaming Resource. And they've often shown up in extra life auctions and people recognize them because everyone else also bought these games dirt cheap. So I bought this game called Duel in the Dark. And honestly, I put it in extra life auction. It didn't sell. I was ready to get rid of it until... I heard Edward from Heavy Cardboard say it is a fantastic two-player experience. And I'm like, all right, I got to give it a try before I get rid of it. And well, I still haven't. <laughs> so that is actually the oldest like that I picked up, I bought, well, you know, didn't get for Christmas when I was eight or whatever. Um, another really old one is I have my dad's copy of Empire Builder now. And he never played it. So I don't know if that counts because that might beat out Shadow Lord because <laughs> that game's been in our family for the longest time without being played uh all right um let me see i i don't well i mean for me it's uh probably well, you gotta have something well it'd be scooby-doo is the one that i still yeah. haven't gotten uh gotten to the table that we were going to and then we did the kitchen move around and, and the table got busy so possibly this weekend that may that may happen uh depends on is that older than clank uh, well clank i've played i don't know that's not off oh you play clank. oh yeah i know no, we played clank a few it? times valeria valeria um i well we got or I give you both at the same time. They might have been both at the same time. Yeah, I think I'm it was sure. both at the same time. Actually, yeah. Now that I think back, I think it was both at the same time. Um, yeah, because we because we ended up because strike team showed up and and I knew the boy would be way more interested in that theme wise. So we got that to the table easily. Um, and then we uh, we we still haven't gotten Valeria and uh, Scooby Doo yet. Um, Scooby Doo's cheap in the three for one sale right now. <laughs> go buy three copies. Give it to all your nieces and nephews for Christmas. Well, there you go. All right. Uh, let's see. Ryan asks, uh, "What do each of you like to read in novel or graphic novel f novel format? What's your favorite genre, subgenre, or series?" I can just let Sean take over here because <laughs> <laughs> Mo reads RPG books and and then plays yeah, yeah, the, my, plays yeah, the yeah, games. My, my favorite reading whoosh. material are game manuals. And, 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 and used to read instead I of reading, you'll generally watch uh, woo woo movies. Yeah, I, I yeah. I honestly, it's terrible. I don't really read anymore except for rule books. I tried the most recent thing. I'll go with the most recent. Um, generally, I like sci-fi fantasy. I, I do not read nonfiction. I read I read fiction of some sort, so that hasn't changed. And I used to always swap between the two. I, I would go through like a fantasy phase and I would read a bunch of fantasy stuff. Then I'd get into a sci-fi phase and I'd read a bunch of sci-fi stuff. Now, unlike Sean, I never really got into the hard sci-fi. I was always more into the, the sci-fantasy uh, side of things uh, with Dune being about as scientific as I got. I love Dune. Dune is my favorite book ever written. Um, I used to read that once a year, but I, I just don't read anything now. Um, so I should read that with everything going on. So so I love the Dune books, but I also read trashy Dragonlance novels. So it kind of went all over. Most recently, I finished off one of the Redwall books because I was curious about it. And I enjoyed the Redwall book. And yes, I realize these are for young adults and my daughter loves it. The problem was they gave all the characters accents and they spelled their accents. And I just, I found myself fighting with the book, but I'm like, this is pretty good. And I actually, I, I got it. Like, I think it was free or a buck or something. Like we were somewhere and I was like, this looks neat. It's fantasy mice. And I wanted to compare it to mouse guard and it is not, it is totally not mouse guard. It's its own thing, which is neat because it still has a mouse, right? It's that same scale. So I read that most recently. And before that I was working my way through the Dresden files novels, but I, fell off the bus at a fourth or fifth book. I don't even know now. And like, I tried to restart that one. It was about demons with coins on their heads. Like I restarted that one three times and I just, I never finished it. Um, and then red shirts. I've again, I haven't finished it. So what I'm, I guess currently reading is red shirts, which the only time I read is it sits in my van. And whenever I'm bringing my mom or D or one of the kids to an appointment and I have to sit and wait in the car, that's what I read. And I'm in the last chapters of that. And uh, it, for me, it's it's I mean, hard sci fi is is first and foremost. Um, I I got my I mean, I was reading Greg Bear and stuff like that when I was, you know, still in still in grade school, practically. Um, and so I love the good, hard sci fi with a whole lot of research behind it. Um, Asimov, as problematic as much of his content is now, um, you know, the 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 science he put into his science fiction always blew me away. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a there were a few fantasy series over the years that I that caught my attention. 
uh, but most of them tended to drag on and on and on and and you know jump the shark at some point um so i i i just ended up stopping bothering with fantasy series because they always went bad it was just like yeah. oh i know this is gonna go in a horrible direction and i may not catch it in time so duh, done with it um, yeah, the fantasy series i read were like the thieves world novels and right. disc world older stuff that actually just kind of just kept coming out with more books yeah well, i mean it disc, wasn't like disc the, world the, yeah disc world you can't go wrong with pratchett right. you're never going to go wrong with so um yeah i think i'm most most people who are gamers have some love of Pratchett at least, yep. I think. Um, and then uh, talking about graphic novels, I finally, I had been a comic collector early in my life, um, actual like collector, bag and board type person. And I drifted away from it. It just got to be too expensive a hobby and I, I couldn't keep up. Uh, and then when comics went digital, I kind of avoided it because part of what I liked about comics was reading them. Uh, and the physical act of holding a comic book and reading it, which is why I still, you know, to this day, PDF RPGs are kind of problematic for me because I'm not holding it. Uh, but I finally, um, actually, thanks to Gail from Twitter, picked up Comixology and yeah. got myself a Comixology account and the 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 uh, Amazon tablet I use for reading these days. I don't really read. Uh, most novels are all digital as well now for me um I See, it's put, weird that you were okay to go with digital to novels but comics still had to stay physical for so long size was a big problem uh but also the number one reason i went digital with um with novels was i could read at night without a nightlight mm. um i could read in like because i never had a kindle paperweight or anything like the kindle book kindles that needed a light i could read in bed without turning a light on um and bugging anyone uh and that's why that's actually why i, I transitioned to reading because at bedtime reading is when i generally read right. uh, i read and then i i drop my tablet and fall asleep <laughs> but uh yeah so i, I picked up a, a big collection of red sonia from gail simone that was on a big discount and she's like oh look hey everyone go check out all my red red sonia stuff it's like 80 percent off for everything i ever wrote in red sonia so i'm like oh you know what darn it i'm gonna do it i've never really read red sonia and gail's awesome so Let's go do it. So I picked that up. Uh, and then right now, what I'm actually working on is the third archive of uh, of Savage Dragon, which is a fictional superhero created by Eric, Lar uh, Eric Larson, um, which is a really fun comic book supers universe. Uh, and I'm, I'm finding myself picking little tiny bits of, of inspiration from that universe mm -hmm. for some of the stuff I'm running. And, and I've, so I'm enjoying that. And yeah, I just started on the third um, book set of those uh, those comics. Yeah, graphic novel wise, all about mouse guard, but that comes out so infrequently. Like it's not like you keep it up. But if a new mouse guard book comes out, I get it. I love mouse guard. Uh, before that would have been Ultimate Marvel when the the Ultimate Universe launched with Ultimate Spider Man. I actually own all the Ultimate Spider Man except for the last two books. I was really into the Ultimate Universe when it launched. I really loved the new view of the Marvel universe and the recreation of the heroes I knew and loved that managed to keep them still being the heroes they were, but told new stories, which the MCU has now proven they can do it again. But at the time that was pretty groundbreaking. Uh, other than that, I don't, I, I, I did collect all of the star Wars uh, when I actually had a job in the auto industry, my pull at rogues gallery comics was anything that said star Wars on the cover <laughs> because the relaunch of star Wars with, I think it was Marvel, whoever got the license with the, the, the prequels, no, the, what, what do you post quals, whatever the <laughs> latest ones, the three, the three ones that ended so flipping horribly. Uh, but when those launched, those comics were amazing. The Darth Vader comics in particular introduced a bunch of characters like Dr. Aphra and a couple of bots that are the best droids that have ever been produced in Star Wars. Yes, even beats out um, the one from Rebels. Um, Dr. Aphra is one of the best new characters they've introduced, like up there with Cad Bane. That series was fantastic. The Poe Dameron series was great too, because Poe's such a great character. And they basically redid the um, Rogue Squadron stories because Poe had his own squadron. So it's kind of like Luke and Wedge and his squadron, but told in a more modern way. That one was really good. And I literally got all, like I got, there was a C-3PO one, there was a Han Solo one and all that. Those comics were so good and they were official and licensed by um, Lucasfilm. So they were all canon. So you didn't have to worry about any of that. 
And a lot of the books told you backstories for scenes that were in the movies. I, I devoured those until I couldn't afford it because getting everything with Star Wars on it obviously wasn't cheap. At the time, we had the spare money for it. So that was the last thing I actually got into. But like I said, uh, no, way better than HK-47. Meatbag. <laughs> HK is good, but he's not as good as BT and Triple Zero. So they are fantastic. Uh, speaking of sci-fi, if anyone has read uh, any of the novels from the Bobiverse, um, not one I know. Let me know. I, I'm dabbling at it, but then I almost went ahead and, and, and grabbed them for the Kindle, and then uh, the reviews on Amazon didn't look as good as the reviews that kind of pushed me towards it. Uh, so I so I hesitated and didn't pull the trigger. Um, also, for some reason, I, I don't understand licensing book rights. If I go to Amazon.com, they have the entire Bobiverse trilogy in one Kindle archive. Mm -hmm. But in Canada, I have to buy them all individually for like an extra, you know, 15 bucks or something like that. Because you can't buy Amazon.com Kindle books for Canada. Right. We, oh. we, we found that one out. And you also can't. Way. Well, the other problem is you can't buy Kindle books for somebody else. Yeah. Um which is yeah, it has to be on your Amazon account. painful. Like, like I know so. I wanted to get my daughter an Amazon Deanna account to start Kindle. buying her own, buying Kindle. her books. Yeah. And I, I can't, has she has to be on Kindle. our account and. Oh. Yeah. You know what I would like to read that I keep hearing great things about is the honor verse. Oh. I, okay. I, I love them. We'll yeah, like jump said, in. I've, Go I've for it. So many people. And I want to read the expanse. Having now seen the series, I want, I want to read the expanse. So uh, you need to, uh, when it comes to Honorverse, there is a point you can just stop. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, they kept going, and it turned from a really great space armada. Um, oh, yeah, that was the... the it was, it was the, 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 this, the, you know, this galactic level battle and a lot of strategy and tactics and, and really interesting. But then the last two books, they may have been more mm -hmm. after that, uh, it went into politics. She essentially got promoted out of Which the Navy. Fits. And it, it fits like the arc. Wise, yeah. It fits the arc, but it got to be really boring. Like it was yeah. just, sure. I think the last book I never finished because there was nothing that brought me to the series left mm -hmm. in the novel. And that was a disappointment. But I think you've got like, but I think literally that's like book 14. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. It's, there's a lot to read like, there. Like, honestly, I should just read the dang books I have downstairs. Oh. I, I think I have three William Gibson novels. I've never even cracked the cracked open, which I did. I grabbed red, 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 uh, oh, red shirts, which isn't Gibson, but I grabbed red shirts and I'm like, I am going to put this in the van in that way all the time. So I'm going to read those. So that was good. Sanderson, isn't he the one that did um, Dying Earth? Math Guy Dave's going on and on about Brandon Sanderson. Yeah, I don't know. But apparently uh, the problem with Brandon is if you're older than him, don't start because the number of books he has planned and the number of years left to write them could be Epic problematic. Epic fantasy and science fiction. I'm trying to find the name of a series. Cosmere. Mistborn. Okay. I've, I've at least heard of Mistborn. I know the name. Never read anything by him. It's not the author I was thinking it was. Oh, he did Wheel of Time. Oh, okay. And Dee's, talk, Dee's talking about, I only want dead trees, all the dead well, trees. Well, he's listed as the Wheel of Time. Yeah. Brian he Sanderson finished the series. Wheel of Time series. Oh, he finished it? There you go. He's co-author of the final three novels. I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, Wheel of Time? That was like <laughs> Robert Jordan or something. Right? Yeah, Robert Jordan. See, I never read any of those either. <laughs> yeah, I. You, you know what? It, the reading in bed thing is what pushed me out of dead trees for novels. Yeah. See, that and also not like bookshelf space at a certain point. Yeah. Like I've got all these old uh, sci-fi novels that were good, but aren't, aren't, no, aren't of the kind that I might read again. Like there are certain mm -hmm. authors, which I will pick up again, like Dune. I just finished reading. I've just literally finished devouring every piece of Dune media available uh, as a lead up to the new book. But a lot of them are like, yeah, I'm, I'm never going to read that again. <laughs> See, the problem is uh, the sleep machine thing stops the fall asleep to the Kindle problem. Mm. So just because of that. Fair. Okay. So yeah, reading fair. reading to fall asleep doesn't actually work. Uh, uh, all right. So moving on, uh, what have we got here? We got Mountain Papa. What's, or, what's a movie or book not already used that would be a cool theme? I'm assuming for a game is yeah. what you're talking about. 
I usually have an answer for this, but I'm drawing a blank right now. So for me, it is uh, Ian M. Banks. Uh, and I think I've even talked about this on the show before, though. But the Culture series of books from, unfortunately, deceased British author Ian M. Banks would make a fantastic game universe. Um, it is a post-scarcity uh, univ- uh, world or, uh, you know, collection of people mm-hmm. uh, where AIs have basically taken over doing all the work and people can do whatever the heck they want. Uh, and if they want to go do something dangerous, they can back up their brain to the AI, you know, to, to their local AI and go do something dangerous. And if they happen to die, that's fine. They just get, you know, regenerated or whatever. But there are other um, collections of beings out there. Um, and the the AIs take humans along sort of as as extra bits <laughs> to go along. And, it's you know, there's some great comedy involved. Uh, the naming of ships if you ever read the books is a fantastic aspect of the, um, the ships name themselves and they all have personalities and things. And it's just, you mentioned that one. Before, yeah. The, yeah. the, the universe is so ripe for the picking. Uh, unfortunately, however, uh, with him being deceased, who knows what the rights of getting something like that right. could be at this time. Yeah. I'm still, everything I can think of has now come out uh, and better versions. Like I can think of worlds that could use better games, but I can't think of anything just off the top of my head. Um, I always thought Visionaries would be an amazing RPG. <laughs> but I don't know, even know if anyone who knows what those are anymore. Uh, oh, what's uh, Amethyst? Remember the comic book series Amethyst? I remember it existing. That's uh, about it. It was probably directed more at D, which means she may not have actually considered it because it was aimed more at her. Yeah. Uh, my sister was a big fan of Amethyst. That could be an interesting... I um, she used to read Promethea. We'll yeah. Talk about that one. It was too pink. Yeah, there we go. That, <laughs> that was D, D avoided it like the plague. But no, uh, yeah. So if anyone wants to take a look, the Amethyst comic book series could be an intriguing, uh, you know, thing to take up. Yeah, I, I'm sure there's something, but I am, I'm drawing a blank. Like everything I can think of they've done, like Dresden Files. That board game's terrible. I would love a good Dresden Files board game, but there is one. So it technically doesn't fit, right? Like, like what, what, what's something that, that would be a good theme that was not already used? I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Like I used to be able to say G.I. Joe or Transformers, but even those are done now. Yep, they're coming out. Like, and, and, I, like, and I've said for years I wanted a good Master of the Universe game, though I want a role-playing game, which hasn't happened yet. Well, I believe it is, though. It's yeah, just a matter I'm of time. I'm not sure, probably. No, no, it'll it only is. be in the in Japan, and you can't ship to the EU <laughs> or the US. No, I, to... I'm pretty sure IDW has <laughs> masters, or not IDW. IDW doesn't do games. Not, not IDW. Um, yeah. Whoever's whoever's Renegade. doing GI Joe and Transformers, Renegade. also Renegade. Renegade, Renegade I believe, also has the the masters. Yeah. IDW. That must be where Renegade got the licenses. I bet you they got them off. Oh, probably. Running Man board game. There you go. Ryan's got a good one there. I would oh, play that. Okay, but... That's a good call. Is it going to be the book or the movie? Because those are two very different I, I don't know. The the theme of people trying to escape yeah. in a game show, but it would have to be, you know, you're the runners trying to get to the end, not the meta. I would think just the actual Running Man as presented. Uh, I mean, I would do a Running Man RPG in a second, but that would be the book, not the movie, not the movie for certain. Yeah, I would I'm, I'm do all the meta levels. Death Race 2000, tech, I'd say that, but it was Thunder Road, right? Like that, literally, they even had the helicopters. Yeah. Thunder Road, the original Thunder Road by Milton Bradley is the Death Race 2000 board game. So yeah. You don't have points for hitting old people. That's about it. So yes, a redone Death Race 2000 game, which would not be able to come out in 2021. No, no. With, with points for running over babies and stuff. I mean, you would probably even struggle with Running Man, uh, depending yeah. on how you did it. I mean, as sure. long as you as long as you made it, um, you know, the, the correctly, I suppose you could, but that would take a, a some tight yeah. rope walking, probably. And yes, Restoration is doing Thunder Road. Um, it's looking good. It's now the problem that's scaring me is lots of expansions. Like they're they're trying to Fireball Alley it or fire, what is it Fireball Alley? Big Mountain Island. thing. Island. Island. Fireball, Fireball Island. Island. Fireball Alley sounds like it was a thing. I mean, Fireball Island, like when they put that out, they put it out in this extra boat and the ship and spiders and whatever. It looks like they're doing that. Um, actually, to be honest, uh, Rizul Courtney's saying Kung Fu Hustle. I don't know how you'd capture the comedy, but I have yet to see a good Wuja board game. 
Like that really feels like a Wuja movie. I have not seen anything come even close. Like here, put out a Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon that looks good, right? Like like actually plays like Crouching Tiger and let you pull off that stuff in a board game. And honestly, I have no idea how. I, I don't know how you do it. I don't know if you're using like uh, the elevation discs of the old Dragonlance board game or something. Like like what what's your mechanic for being able to run on bullets to kick someone in the face, right? Like in an RPG that works, and there yeah. is a great RPG out there for that, but for board game so um, ryan's ryan's asking about a blade board game and while no i'm willing to bet in the next five years we will see it because reboot blade is being rebooted I, into the I mcu thought there was a, i thought there was a blade board oh game. possibly but he's being rebooted into the mcu yeah. which means for certain there will be blade board games oh um, this is a good topic <laughs> I, I just spiral zone but that goes again way way back um i i, I want to I'm insulting people we've reviewed games for, but I want a good Robotech game still. Like, like I don't know what, but not not what I played. Some are decent games, but none of them really feel like I'm playing Robotech. I'm Macross Robotech there. Well, because the Invid Invasions is there's enough there. Yeah, I, I do feel like I'm I'm taking part in that universe in that game, but I want a good Macross game. Well, you and you want something that's heavy. Like you don't yeah, want, I want heavier, that's right? The thing, I, I right? want I want something a little bit more to it. Um, the cell, I'm pretty sure exists. There's what is it, room 42, I think it's the name of the game. Mm -hmm. If you look it up, and it's all about being trapped in various rooms and stuff. Um, Gattaca game, uh, Gattaca's a great movie, but yeah, yeah, I don't know what I'd do with it in a board game. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're, they're trying to be a hidden, well, hidden trader, try to get by. It'd almost be like the um, they've made a game of the Rutger Howard scene from Blade Runner. To me, that's kind of what Gattaca would be, right? Like, well, they just today announced a uh, Blade Runner RPG. I thought um, there, again, there was one from an older publisher, so it's probably an update. Uh, so the op Razul has asked the opposite of Ryan's question: What board game would make a great movie or series? I want to watch Galaxy Trucker the movie. I want to see TV. I want it to be a live action. I want to. I want a fake reality TV show that is Galaxy Trucker, the board game where you have competing teams trying to assemble their ships and then flying them through space with all the meteors and everything and seeing what team makes it to the end and one team blows up halfway through. It could be a movie that's just like one extended episode, but I would told, I'd watch a series of that. Fair. That, that's fair. what I want. Uh, I, I don't know. I would be tempted to watch. It would almost have to be anime, but um, unfair, the anime series where you get competing uh, yes. uh, competing theme parks and they're literally like backstabbing each other and sabotaging each other's rides and things. And, See, again, and I picture as a reality show where they like show Sean off to the side where stuff's in the back. Well, yeah, they just put up that observation platform. But you know what? I got a big wad of cash in my pocket and that's not going to last long. Wait till the after the commercial break for this one, you know. Like that's yeah, how I pay but it. I mean, I can see that. But I, I could, all, but I could see it being done in anime where you could yeah. actually get away with, you know, killing people and not, you know, being arrested. Yeah. <laughs> so, that. um, you know, stuff the, fables is a good call. Okay. Yeah. That that is a good call. Yeah. There, there's a, a geek shame. I've never seen Cowboy Bebop. I thought Any you finally it. did. No, it was on Tubi and they pulled it. So oh, I never actually got okay. to actually watch it on Tubi. It's, see, it's interesting. You're not the first person like this week who is like, oh, I just watched Cowboy Bebop for the first, or started watching Cowboy Bebop yeah. for the first time. And I'm like, what? In, in 2021, why is this coming up? I don't even because understand. Because you can't find it. Maybe it's on something now. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's, it's come out on something else. again recently. Now, there is the movie on Netflix, but I, based, that's newer, right? So I'm assuming mm. I'd be better to watch the original series uh, before watching Watch what it. you can. <laughs> yeah, it's available. Uh, um, yeah, I've heard it's good. Wasteland Delivery Service, I guess, but that's just basically, I don't know. It's Borderlands, but animated. So yeah, I guess a Borderlands animated movie would be cool. Yeah. Um. Oh, I thought of one that I want to see a board game of Pacific Rim. Oh, where's my Pacific Rim board game? Talk to talk to Jen. She'll be she'll be uh, <laughs> she'll yes. be all over that. Oh um, man, if you haven't watched Pacific Rim Black on Netflix yet, do it. It is so good. I have not. So no, I'm... that's that's the new animated series. Oh, okay. Warning, it doesn't end, but supposedly a new season's coming. It okay. is really good. That makes me think Pacific Rim would be a fantastic role-playing game. In uh, that well, Jen, particular setting. Like, already, uh, Jen's but, half already kind of yeah. like, <laughs> developed it and just wants someone to pay her. Uh, <laughs> but yes, 
Oh, there is a. I don't remember a Pacific Rim. I know games that simulate Pacific. Yeah, you can Rim. you can play Pacific Rim in certain games, but it's not. There is no Pacific Rim game that I recall. Oh, but there, there, there. I thought of a movie series, well, franchise, because there's now what two, two or three movies. I can't even remember now. Three movies in an animated series. Did they get to the third movie yet? I don't even remember. So that's what I, I can't even remember. That's that's. See, I'm I not a huge fan. The two, it just I just I finished know. watching Black, and I'm just thinking about. But like, it's got to be produced like giant killer robots, GKR right. heavy hitters, which is a hundred and eighty dollar game, but comes with pre painted mechs. Like, it's got a with a giant kaiju. It's got to look good. It's it's got to be like on the level of that. Well, I mean, I, you I, essentially, Simon has to do it if you're doing a board game. Well, no, giant uh, killer robots wasn't Simon. There no. are there, there's so many people with Kickstarter now doing miniature games. I think almost anyone could do it. No, but I'm thinking like uh, Death May Die Cthulhu size kaiju. <laughs> well, no, no, not well. Hey, maybe as a final boss, yes, yes, you could have one. Okay, fair enough. That that might require Simon. <laughs> it might. Um, final Fantasy minis game. Uh, yeah, there's there's no reason they haven't. I, I, it has to be a whole whole right. licensing thing. You don't say there are Final Fantasy games out there, but the Final Fantasy Tactics is out. It's um. Whoa, what's it called? It's one of the Tiny Epic games. Tiny Epic Tactics? It, it's not licensed, but that's what it is. And you use the box and stuff to be able to play it. All right. Uh, well, we'll we'll jump into something a little uh, lighter for a second. Uh, oh, Razul yeah. asked, if Bellhop could be a promo in a game, what game would that be? I, I don't know. Not one I thought of before. At least I thought he was asking what kind of promo would it be? Like, what would your card power be? And I'm like, oh, now we're getting into the whole I'm Gloomhaven thing again. <laughs> um, uh, um, I don't know. What game would I want to be in? Kind of thing. Go Cuckoo. Giant Meeple. You sit on top. No. <laughs> that would be awesome. Actually, now I want it. I want, like, Mo cross-legged like this. <laughs> put on top of the Go Cuckoo thing. <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something we play all the time, and I'm like, I'm like, do say an unfair, unfair, yeah, an unfair, unfair promo, promo card, card could be fair. I, I don't know what just the bellhop, and then like it'd be a, like an employee. Mm, I don't sure. know. That could work. I could see that. There you go, Dan. I had this <laughs> idea. She's she's yeah, pitching it behind that. your how, back. How do podcasters end up being promo cards? Do the people reach out to the podcasters? Or do the podcasters reach out to them? Or do they like reach out to an artist like Quan Chai Moria and go, can you draw a picture of me? And then they <laughs> provide, like, how does that relationship happen? I'm, I'm assuming it's probably a late night at Origins at the right place yeah. kind of thing, but I don't know for sure. That would be my, be that would be my guess. Right. Like, that's my guess is the, the certain types of gatherings that happen, the gathering of friends type of stuff. There, there are multiples of those. And I've been to some of them and most of them are just crowds of people trying to get free stuff. But the people who stay after the giveaways tend to make some interesting connections, right. which is why we got a pile of stuff from Queen Games one year, because I got to meet Trevor, hang out with Trevor for a while from Queen Games, and that worked out well. Um, that, no, I don't want to. I hate Dead of Winter, so no, I do not want to be in Dead of Winter. I'm trying to think of like games I'd like. I'd want to be a miniature in something, maybe. I don't know. I'm like I, I'd say Terraforming Mars, but there's reasons I don't really want to be involved with Terraforming Mars anymore. Yeah. Like that's my first thought is a Terraforming Mars promo card that I don't know what it would be. The bellhop who collects game cubes and then you get two points for every game cube. The bellhop's collected by the end of the game or something. And I don't know, there'd be another card that would be like um, uh, the Jones theory makes the bellhop discard cubes because cubes replace Q or something. Right. But, but we, again, we got to get the bellhop's laws into a game. And so, there you go. Um, and I need more interesting laws then instead of just get the <laughs> game played um i said i'm trying to think of yeah, something with a space played. hotel there we go there's the oh. grand austria hotel i should be a, i've never even played the game but grand austria hotel would probably be a an appropriate one uh all right uh look so quad uh, heroes i'm up for that there you go quad heroes okay yeah. i'd be like i'd look like a square bell obviously <laughs> with like the beard somehow right and then the cue would be the the dinger oh, that totally could be a thing Gloomhaven's a bit my no one gets to be promos in Gloomhaven. No. And I, I'm not I'm not I'm not strange enough looking and weird. Have you seen <laughs> the stuff from Frosthaven? The races? Wow. I yeah. love the fact it's not Tolkien. I, I love still it. have to figure out like they just dropped something today. They made an announcement in their Discord about blah 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 blah. And I have no idea what it is they announced. <laughs> I guess I'm not in the Discord. It's so, so weird. So I gotta I, I mean I haven't had that game installed in ages. 
but I think I need. Oh, to, you're talking about the Gloomhaven. Yeah, the the, the video yeah. game. Um, so I think I need to reinstall it and figure out what the heck they're talking about. Me, something, something has happened. Something's been released. Something's been added. I oh, yeah. don't know what. Um, I just I got bored of the fact that I it was just kind of a roguelike with some of the character classes from the game, but mm-hmm. not all of them. Yeah, it 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 failed for me, and I lost interest. Clank, I'd be a promo, and I'd totally be a promo in Clank. Isn't everyone already a promo and playing? Yeah, most people. That's, that's, but but I'm trying to think of games I like really like or core worlds. Like, give me, make me a leader in core worlds. That'd be even more badass. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to think of games. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know, space base. How do you do a promo? The Mo ship, like I don't know, the bellhop <laughs> ship, that doesn't really work, right? I'm like Quacks of Quillenburg, and I'm like, well, I'll be an ingredient. Like, like I'm just trying to think, like, what kind of games have promos? Uh, um. The this uh, sentinels wasn't it? Sentinels, um, sentinels and multi. Yeah, I, I already am a card. I played him. Did that not look like me on that card? <laughs> yeah. He was a terrible character. Actually, people tell me he's great, but not. Do not make a deck yeah. with two defenders and a healer. Yeah, no, that was that uh, actually ruins the game. That was that was a horrible mistake on our part. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I just feel bad because it ruined the game for Sean even getting to experience <laughs> it. Really, um, I think it was twenty nineteen. I think uh, it for was Fro- for Frosthaven. I'm just trying to get to the end of the end of the updates right now. I wish there was a show all on updates, so I, you yeah, didn't I have to hit load like, more every explain, time. Just show me the day it ended. That should be there. Well, and it is. And now, but you got to scroll no, down. Like it should be right at the top where it says blah blah blah. People made this a reality, raising this much money. Should say on this date, and then it here it is, May first, 2020. 2020. Okay, that so was the fun. That was the I funded it wasn't day. That long ago. Yeah, May first, 2020. Um. All right, uh, moving no, on. We did not back Frosthaven because we're not even halfway through Gloomhaven. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next question uh, from Tech. Uh, to, to, to Sean and Mo, what is the one thing, board game related or not, that is coming out or that you have ordered that you're excited to get your hands on? Oh, you got anything? uh well i mean that's i've got so much kickstarter stuff anymore because nothing's been coming um so i think i am still really interested in getting my hands on galaxies in peril um which is now i mean march 2021 was the expected date yeah you were expecting to get that and run it yeah i was hoping to have been running that this summer um and uh that still not happened um he's getting closer he's 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 keeping us updated but he has already, he's at the point now where he's already started working on his next Kickstarter. Um, yeah. It's like, you know, everything is just kind of stuck in places and there's nothing more mm-hmm. he can do. So yeah, that's too bad. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. Um, the next one, uh, I do believe my studies in sorcery game is en route. So within two to three weeks, I should have studies in sorcery. And I am looking forward to getting that to the table because I know that that has shipped apparently. So. All right, my biggest one is the PC I ordered two years ago. Please, sometime, anytime. You were there when we yep. talked to Wayne, yep. and basically he's refusing to do it because it would cost too much. But like I'm at that point where I'm just like, I, I thought you said hero queer, and that sounds amazing. There should be that should be a thing. We we could we could get together with some miniature makers and we'll make rainbow dice. But yes, PC. I I don't I want to be downstairs. I, this shouldn't be happening in this room anymore. It should be happening downstairs. I shouldn't be adjusting cameras so you see miniatures, so you don't see D's office. I shouldn't have to rearrange all these lights and everything before recording. Um, not even the video card. I just I want the full PC. Um, added to the fact you can't get video cards anymore, you can no longer get power supplies anymore. So without scavenging from an old system, and you can't get power supplies that are good enough power the video cards because everyone's using them for data mining sorry we're explicit for a second <laughs> we'll ding that out yeah make a note to ding out at uh whatever it is yep so yeah pc that has been ordered at a want the most um second i'm looking forward to coyote and crow showing up um i am looking forward to going to game cons next year probably breakout in march hopefully that'll be a big one um i know this isn't the one thing the one thing is the pc like like there's more to it than that there's family related reasons that we could probably free up this room 
which would be very good for my teenage daughter who is sharing a room with her younger sister right now in a bunk bed she doesn't fit in. Right. Um, so we, we want to get out of this room and move everything downstairs. Like Deanna's office will be down. Well, Deanna's talked about also possibly moving upstairs, but whatever. Rearrange the whole house, basically. But to do that, I need a better PC. And yes, what I could do, and we've been talking about it, is move this one down there. But we just had the damn modem put in right here, which really sucks because they didn't ask me where I wanted it. They just did it. We might have done that somewhere else that might have been more centrally located. But yeah, that's that's the biggest one. Um, gaming related, I, I, Coyote and Crow, I want to see show up. I want to look through that. I want to flip through that book. Uh, board game wise, I like Kickstarter. I do have a hero quest coming and supposedly according to Hasbro, it's going to make it here by the end of the year. And well, it is Hasbro. So there's a chance yeah, because they can pull strings that other companies can't. Uh, so that might show up, especially now that I, we did do exactly what I thought they'd do and give us all the stretch goals. So I'm even more excited about it because there is more newer content and it's not just going to be the same game. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, the new Azul, uh, as for want to try, I really want to try the new Azul. It's cool. You're like drafting parts of your board as well as hexes to put on it. And uh, you know how much we've enjoyed all the other versions of Azul. So I am looking forward to checking that out and the new Unfair expansion. And Land and Sea, which is the latest game from Good Games Publishing, also looks really good. And I hope that's on its way, but I can't actually confirm that because I filled out a form and I haven't heard from them since. So hopefully they'll just magically show up. I don't know. I'm like I'm thinking I might need to reach out to the people who are like, you are the best review writers out there and say, you know, hey, I filled out the form. Can you, you know, give a little push there or something? Uh, so uh, Matthew and Dave has a question just for me. Uh, Sean, how many RPGs have you bought in the last two months? <laughs> uh, and, and actually, that's it's kind of hard to figure out. Um, there's backed, there's bought, there's uh, there's supplements. Uh, for actual RPGs, it's probably only about seven uh, <laughs> ish. Uh, if, if you said over the last four months, it would be significantly higher because there were some binges in there, but uh or some binges <laughs> it's uh it's probably about seven full rpgs <laughs> this sounds like an answer for your accountant uh, oh wow uh and then uh i think we're probably coming to about the time we want to wrap this up we got one more question here from the lobby i see uh and that is from razul what is the next con you see yourself actually attending I'll probably break up like I, I that's it, it's like the first one of the year anyway right so Toronto by March heck I don't even know well I like, mean I, I honestly don't know we should be with the vaccines and everything we should be going to cons in Toronto at least there's no border crossing well and the other thing is now uh as of today actually Ontario yes. has uh started a mandatory um you have to you have to display proof of vaccination to get into places um and so because that's starting today uh and then a month from now we move to a digital passport right now it's actually a physical piece of paper so um, you can bring up your yeah you can bring it up on your phone but they, up on your they phone. will move to i don't a, understand what everyone's like here's a, there's a professional laminating company in windsor that will laminate. i'm like stop fucking profiteering all you have to go to i forget the site but you go to this one site and it brings it up and you just have to go like this yeah i i i there's a whole lot of ways to fake it as well though so uh, I'm looking forward to October 22nd when the digital uh, passport comes out. Hopefully it won't be broken um, yeah. and and they'll actually be more useful because honestly, um, it's it's pretty sketchy the way they're doing it right now. It's really easy to just do well, whatever. Yep. Um, but because they're doing that now, forward six months from there, Hopefully Ontario is in a much, much better place Hopefully. and the con can actually happen. Whether or not we'll be able to enjoy that time with all of our friends from Buffalo and, and other areas who come up to that con, that's a whole other question. But yeah. uh, hopefully Breakout Con will happen. Hopefully Breakout, and unless there's something closer, because I just, one of my goals is to go to more cons, to, to network more and to get our name out more. So like maybe there's something in London, Ontario, we'll find out about. Um, we've been invited to one in Michigan, but but you still can't cross the border here. Uh, the U.S. doesn't want us in. 
which I still find laughable when you look at the numbers <laughs> on both sides. I'm like, kind of like, oh, who are you kidding? Yeah. Um, even with the Mexican excuse, I'm still kind of like, what, who are you kidding? But yeah. sure, whatever. So, so that's why a lot of people are like, why didn't you go to Oregon? Why didn't you go? I can't. I, I, you can't. And yeah. it's ridiculous to fly somewhere I can drive to in three hours or five hours. If I can drive there in three to five hours, I'm not going to drive four hours to Toronto just to take a flight to get there. Yeah. And then there's the whole, we may not get let back in and quarantining and all the other BS that goes with it. So that wasn't going to happen this year. Because people are like, I can't believe you're not here. Like I have publishers like that wanted to ha- hook up and I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm like, even if I wanted to. Yeah. No, Indian Indianapolis was not a good place to be. No. Uh, their numbers were horrible. And the, I, I don't feel Gen Con did a suitable, uh, took suitable steps. I mean, to protect the people that yes, yes. Based on Indianapolis's uh, regulations, they went over and above, but Indianapolis is in a really bad way right now. So maybe they're not the best thing to be paying attention to. I'm I'm still wondering if there will be follow from that. Yeah. And for people who attended and did take precautions, I hope you're fine. Yep. Yeah. Like we missed like in the last little while, Deanna lost two grandparents and we can't, that's, it was in the States grandparents live in kentucky and we couldn't do anything right we couldn't see anyone we couldn't cross we couldn't so yeah no going to cons if we can't even go to funerals right yep so that's why it's way too low a note do we have a do we have a like happy question to bring that back we're like <laughs> uh so what are we at? Um, went to gen con I've got and something we here the borders uh see something about uh, d thinks i could be a good guild master promo i guess <laughs> Uh, I know. I just I just deleted. We had some backup question. I deleted, oh, you deleted that. I'm like, where did this? Where did it go? I'm like, it's yeah. here. I could um, probably undo. There you go. Oh, we should do this. We definitely should do this before we go. All right. It's so like, was yeah. time sensitive. <laughs> so one of our uh, we have one other question from one of our patrons from Pax Pax and Arian, uh, and this is a time sensitive question. Their spouse has been asked to pitch a tabletop related article to an editor. They suggested travel games. Now that we're traveling more, a lot of folks are probably pitching the same old decks of cards in their carry-on bags. What are some great, compact, portable, flexible venue games that folks should consider packing? All right, so when I got this question, except for the time-sensitive part, I totally wouldn't answer this tonight. This would be a full episode. That the, the Travel games is a full episode. And to be honest, I have two other questions in the queue about traveling with games. But I've been holding off on them due to, as we just talked about, travel being restricted. So I didn't want to bridge those topics. But what we'll do, since this is time sensitive and we love packs, we will do some stuff off the top of our head. So one of the first things that came to mind was Zentico. Because to me, that's a camping game, but it's an outdoor game. But the way that wraps up, easily fit in your luggage, it's PU leather and plastic great three-player abstract game just don't play with two with two it just it's you could play forever you need at least three players to play it so zentico was the first thing i thought of uh the next thing i thought of was my personal copy of travel Catan. which unfortunately i don't know if you can get anymore but it was all self-contained and only about this big and it's perfect it fits on a plane table or a train table perfectly and it's little tiny plastic pegs. Unfortunately, it's not magnetic, but in general, if anything gets jostled, it's fine. And it has like the smallest cards I've ever seen. They're like only this big for all the resources, but they're trays to hold all of it. So like everything's contained. Now, if you get a good bump from the bottom, you've lost your game because they're just kind of pegged in, but it has drawers to hold four different players' components. And no, it's it, it even does the full Catan. Like it's not even like the family version. Each of the hexes are all there. What's already set on the board are the numbers. So you shuffle up all of the, um, if you shuffle up all of the tiles face down, you then just put them over the numbers, which can lead to bad setups as far as distribution, but it does have set setups. So that's actually um, the the pocket Catan, I think is fantastic. Um, Next would be oddball aeronauts, or if you happen to be traveling where you don't have a table. Because this is a card game you play in your palm of your hand. You each have your own deck. You hold it in your hand, and it has to do with flipping up three cards and putting cards when you're defeated to the bottom of your deck. It uses a rock, paper, scissor style thing where you're picking an attack type, the opponent picks a defending type, and like cannons beat out another one. Really simple, but it's a fact you don't need the table. With that is a game called Palm Island. This one just comes recommended from other people. Um, 
note i don't have notes here i don't know how i'm pulling <laughs> off just going here palm island is another it's you play it in the palm of your hand i that's all i know about the game is it, it's basically whenever i talk about oddball aeronauts everyone else is like no 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 pick up palm island so palm island then there's all the two-player games we love all the ones all of our coffee shop table games uh the the duke um the b1 hive. hive yes i might the b1 hive um not patchwork unfortunately unless you have large tables yeah no patchwork or you want to do it with stacked you can kind of do it with stacked polyominoes and you just put them in the bot it's a mess yeah. Hi, unfortunately it takes up too much room but now there is patchwork express which is smaller again i can't tell you uh i haven't played it supposedly well, patchwork and, express you know ro- uh rolling rights are another great option like yes. any of the rail the rail uh games and, and those railroad you know, ink railroad ink um what what about uh seven wonders dice um isn't there i've seven, never played seven wonders dice isn't there a seven wonders I, I'm, I'm i'm not crazy right there is a seven i wonders don't dice. remember there being a seven wonders thought there dice. was now that doesn't mean there isn't one lanterns dice uh silver and gold um uh, oh so clever twice as clever no we haven't reviewed all of these um super pinball starcade lantern dice i i agree it, it does take up a bit more room than some of these other ones roll for lasers there's an interesting one where you can just print it out before you go print out a couple sheets and bring a pencil and some dice uh to bring up something we reviewed a long time ago um the other thing though, I'm trying to think of like stuff that fits in your pocket. Uh card games, Star Realms, Star Realms, a Star Realm deck is like a deck of 60 cards. You could easily throw that in a pocket. The um button shy games produces a whole ton of games that fit in a mint tin. Um, and I couldn't even name a bunch of them have mint in the name, but then they moved on from there. The tiny epic games are tiny and epic. Um the other thing too is you want light games you can possibly play with other people uh again thinking not pandemic but if you're <laughs> killing time at a uh, airport and you can see another couple at a, at a table and be like hey do you want to learn a quick game stuff like no thanks for sale uh farkle the nice quick easy games uh seven wonders duel actually is surprisingly small in the box but the footprints yeah it takes up some space on the it, table it depends like like the and i be able, like we could play that at every coffee shop in Windsor, but the second cup because they have the stupid round tables. But every other coffee shop, we could fit it. But there's no room for your drinks. Like it just it, it it's close. Um, uh, Go Cuckoo has a metal container, so I don't recommend carrying that one around. Yeah, uh, unless you're unless you're driving everywhere. Driving everywhere, fine. But if you're flying anywhere, don't bring Go Cuckoo. Yeah. Plus, uh, unfortunately, that tin gets easily dented, so you don't actually want to throw it in your luggage unless it's just with light clothing, um, which is a disappointment actually on that one. If I walk downstairs, I, I, I'm i sure I would see more. Um, the one with the cards that you layer, Circle the Wagons, Kaido, um, uh, Lotus. Uh, if you got a big group, you could bring Goris Maximus. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Medium is a surprisingly small card box if you're looking for party games. And technically, Medium, you could just like pick a few of the decks and shrink it down to... You could probably fit it in a standard deck of 52 cards. If you just like took out the cards you needed, uh, I went. You know what? We talked not too long ago about the L deck. Uh, <laughs> how many different games are there for the L deck? Yeah, uh, though I we never did actually try any of them. Nope. Our whole list of uh, free print and plays probably had a ton of them. Our free games that you could play with D six dice actually had a ton of print and rights, like print and rolling rights, right. including some like interesting dungeon crawls. Um. There, there's so many i'm just now i'm drawing a blank but uh lost cities the original lost cities can take up especially if you get rid of the board and just use the the cards do not Did you pick mention up bananagrams bananagrams is good jabuka jabuka be perfect um a little wordy does not take up a lot of room there's tons like yeah. honestly there are tons tons of great great travel games uh what I, if i was going to write an article for the general public I'd be sticking to the the bananagrams, the the little wordy. Maybe mention the mint games, like the button shy games. But the problem with those are is you want games people can go to their corner store, not corner store, but like like a big box store and buy because they're not going to know what a local game store is, right? They're not going to know to go to a Huguen Munin. But I know that's long gone store at this point. But they're not going to know to go there to pick up. Like like who's going to get you a copy of Adderall Aramans? Yes, it was the first thing popped in my head. But who's going to know where to pick? I don't even know where to get a copy of that now. Is it even on Amazon? Right. 
Bean, Bonanza is a good one. Bean you used to be able to get at Walmart and stuff. I don't know if that's still true. Uh, that's kind of why I mentioned Catan right away. Yeah, button shy games. Are, like it's a wallet games. <laughs> no, I would love to see if the Happy Salmon played on a plane. Uh, that doesn't quite work when you got to swap. Code names. Uh, code names takes up a lot of room. Code hey, names. I would love to see play a code names dot game. I would. I would. Yeah, I would love to see a, a travel edition of code names. There's no reason you smaller. can't do it because yeah. it's like that box is not a travel box at all. Um, and it, it seems really excessive how much space that game takes up. Yeah, yeah. Code names is unfortunately not. Uh, Flux I hate so no. Sushi <laughs> Go that's a lot of cards to pass. But I don't know that that depends on room. Yeah. I don't know how it plays two player. Teach is a good game. That's fair. Pretty much any you know macaron any trick taking game right. Diamonds, hearts, spades. You could get the the modern ones. You don't want like an arboretum where you're building a big tableau of trees um deanna i'm just scrolling back through the chat see what they said for people listening at home uh deanna again men mentioned our free print in place there was a whole bunch lantern dice patchwork is mentioned as a table hog friday that's a good call if you're traveling alone um though again i just say get the app owner rim owner rim can be played two players or actually all of the Oniverse games travel oh. quirkle should just replace standard quirkle uh hey if you want to play Takedo, the app does pass and play Yep. Great interface. We love that. Oh, someone else mentioned Jabuka. That's a good one. Wix, that's another roll dice. I don't know Enchanted Plumes. I've, of course. Onitama repackaged, I guess. Onitama again. I just played on a phone. Travel Quirkle came up again. The Mint Tins, it's been mentioned. Uh, definitely, yes, for Enchanted Plumes. It's, yeah, but as long as you got a, a table that, you know, that you can play a play game of Solitaire on, yeah. you can play Enchanted Plumes. Uh, Las Vegas is a lot of little dice. That's the only problem I worry about that with traveling, bringing all those little dice, but they're D6s. Strike could be fun, but again, you got dice possibly flying everywhere. You don't want to play strike and have someone on a plane and have some, you know, die go flying into another chair. What they need is uh, to, to stop something like that, you need essentially a, uh, a boggle type thing, but soundproofed. Yeah. So, because no one wants to play Boggle on a plane, you would annoy every other human being on that plane. Crack, yes. crack, crack. But if you could get like a sound, a, a sound muffled Boggle yeah. container, so that you could play some of these dice games without having to worry about dice flying everywhere, that mm -hmm. would be fantastic. Why do we? I, I think I, I need to copyright her, like patent this concept quickly before someone else gets it, because I've never seen anything like it. No, I haven't. I wouldn't work with strike. Strike is you have to throw the dice. It's a oh, dexterity okay. game where you're, you're literally, you, you throw dice into a bowl and you're trying to hit the other dice to roll them to certain sides and stuff. Right. That's we, we, we need a copy of strike. <laughs> I've yet to get to play it. It went out of print for a while. It came back. They came up with an HP version, but it's it had silly symbols. And now there's another edition of it out where they're actually calling it gladiators or something. Cause there was a gladiator theme at one point and, I don't know. They keep switching it. It's I, it's one of my I need to play it lists. There, uh, Courtney's has a friend that's working on a sound free dice tower. So okay, you set the hook go. up and then yep, yep, yep. you know make make an equal you know fifty fifty split <laughs> deal. I, there's more. I know there are more. Like we could probably give thirty of these games. As for the best, I'm not really ranking them. <laughs> you know on on what's great. And what's well, it not. depends. It depends so much on you know. Are you traveling by plane? Are you traveling by car? Are you looking for something you can play in the car while you're driving, or yeah. in the plane, or just something you get that. there? Just you know, just something you can play when you get to a location. Are you looking at playing you know with groups or with just you and a partner? Or there's so many variables involved here. All right, I don't know if Pax is still around. We might have <laughs> we might have uh, answered it after. They left the chat, unfortunately. Is that or they're madly uh, uh, scrambling madly notes? Taking notes, yes. <laughs> we, we probably should have hit that one earlier. I, I, you know what? I, I deleted it thinking because I had it as a backup question, but it wasn't meant as a backup question. I had it in the backup section, right? but it wasn't meant as a backup I, question. Yeah, I was, I was getting ready to go for it, and then all of a sudden it was gone. I'm like, wait, wait. It's Which reminds time me, sensitive. I am going to quickly jump over to our, uh, our, our Discord and see if anyone else put anything in before I continue. All right, no, uh, that was Razzle's mentioning travel sequence is a good one, and Pax is there. We didn't. Uh, yeah, there we go. I was like, didn't. oh, I feel bad. <laughs> I'm like, wait, that, we were supposed to read that one. It's just I put it in a certain spot where we usually have our backup questions if no one asks anything. But you all were awesome today, so we didn't have that problem. So I almost <laughs> forgot about it. Um, but no, no, there's nothing else in our Discord, so we are good to move on. All right, well, that's it for today's 
AMA. Thank you so much for the questions and awesome interactions. We've made a note of any questions we didn't get to tonight. We'll save those up to potentially talk about in a future show. Sounds good. Remember, you don't have to wait for an AMA to ask us questions. If you've got a game or game night question for us, just head over to the website and click on Ask the Bellhop.